So hello, my name is Rebecca, I'm a fish biologist and ichthyologist and also a PhD student. I specialise and study the evolution of lower card catfishes, which are also known as plecos within the aquarium trade. I also have a background in aquarium husbandry through the trade and also um, within my own aquariums. So a lot of people want to advance in their fish keeping and it's really difficult to find sources on how to and there's many reasons behind this but this is probably the largest reason I think and a lot of fish keepers might not actually understand entirely what they're doing and that's why they're not advancing in their fish keeping or getting to the next level and this doesn't have to be scientific but largely reaching into that. And I never said this method would be easy or this is why advancing in your fish keeping beyond that sort of uh, surface level isn't easy. Uh, it's just part of what it is to get a bit further within your fish keeping and understanding what you're keeping and keeping some of those more advanced fishes. And this is really that a lot of people aren't understanding more than the surface level of when it comes to fish keeping. They're understanding the, uh, what they're told and not actually thinking, they might know one level of how. So for example, um, I've got here, uh, why do you need to, uh, let's go, why do you need uh, to check and read ammonia, nitrites and nitrates? And most people will understand that all three of those are toxic. Another level will be to the sort of different toxicity levels. It's generally well understood that ammonia and nitrite are much more toxic at lower levels. Nitrates at higher, um, at higher levels are higher in toxicity. But that's generally the extent a lot of people, fish keepers will understand. And a lot of people will think, why is it important to understand what, like, how is it toxic and why is it toxic? Largely because of, if you're going to get higher levels of um, ammonia or nitrites particularly, also maybe nitrates, is how are you going to deal with it? How does ammonia and nitrites particularly, also nitrates to the same extent, actually affect the fishes? Because if you know that it deals with how the fish can uptake oxygen particularly and maybe the mechanisms of how you can do it, you can kind of work with the symptoms and understand how to treat it. Obviously those, it's quite well understood how to deal with kind of higher levels of nitrates and I guess nitrites and ammonia particularly because water changing will just lower it. And then you got want to understand that what's actually naturally lowering it is obviously your um, nitrifying bacteria and sometimes archaea in the freshwater environment. But understanding to that further level will jump your fish keeping a lot more beyond that basic level. There's so many different examples and the problem is, is a lot of aquarium resources don't actually provide that kind of jump to the next level of fish keeping because they're only they're telling you things, but they're not really explaining the next sort of, the physiology, the ecology, the next level of it, or providing the citations for you to do so. So then you have to go on to researching maybe onto um, different sources that are aimed at different kinds of topics, so uh, maybe more biology resources and such. And there are actually loads, uh, mainly aimed at sort of zebrafish husbandry that I see quite a bit. There's so many other examples, like. Why is pH and hardness important? So why are you told to keep certain fish at a certain pH or hardness? And understanding that will understand maybe why the eggs aren't hatching. So if you've got certain fishes and their eggs aren't hatching, they can't seem to get us out of the eggs. Why is particularly like calcium or maybe carbonates important with that? Why maybe you might need to lower that or alter it? Um, and also knowing that that actually might be the cause also, also, um, also understanding why is it important in the fish's, fish's physiology, maybe the fishes are a bit more difficult to keep, or why they're actually surviving in a little bit more of adaptable habitat than you previously thought. And there is one level of this is actually looking at the scientific papers. Also add it, understanding those extreme physiologies, but why is it important also uh, there's so much more physiology to it and that also interchanges with why is hardness important or calcium, magnesium, um, quite a few other measures important in fish's physiology so 
why certain fish don't want to be brought down in that very low sort of conductivity TDS, hardness measures, well, some, and some fish are much more adaptable. And it depends on how low, but understanding those chemical interactions, such as the effect of pH and different hardness measures on how calcium and magnesium are um, uptaken by certain fishes at low pHs or and there's certain adaptations other fish will have to dealing with that and whether I don't know if it's therapeutic or not and this is really that when it comes to fish keeping to get to that next stage you really want to get to that next level of critical thinking you want to look at every source and question every source you read read their citations if they have any and why do they not have citations maybe the writer actually is has enough credentials in their field, I guess, or they, some of it will be just husbandry experience in general. So other examples like, why do algivores need algae? Uh, why can't you just feed them uh, vegetables? Or, because you're told you, they're algivores, feed them algae, but why do they need algae? Uh, why can't I supplement it with something else? Um, maybe it's availability, but why can't I supplement it with vegetables? Well, we know that vegetables and um, macrophytic plants are not the same as algae. They're quite far, like, distantly evolved. The closest would be the chlorophytic algae. Algae are high in protein, high in a lot of other vitamins and minerals, I'd say. And it does depend on the vegetable. But also understanding why you don't want to feed certain foods. It's that next sort of level of fish keeping so you can answer... If people have questions, it means you can answer sort of the next level of, um, like, why are cereals not ideal? Well, there could be evidence that they're um, negative, they have negative influences on the fish's physiology over time. Or why not feed cellulose? Because we know that low carbs, none of them can digest cellulose. But maybe we need to look at something else for nutrition and then also thinking that there's plenty, there's actually quite a few papers that say, that say or suggest that cellulose it causes liver um, diseases in fishes. But why do alcohols need algae? Just think of the physiology. Why do horses need grass or hay? Hay is grass. Um, but why do certain animals need what they need? Because they're evolved to have that physiology, that um, anatomy, that morphology to be able to feed on that thing. And can they extract the nutrition? And then thinking maybe we don't have that diet in captivity, what can we supplement it with? Because like stuff like Pfizer, are, are insects quite the same? Do we know whether they're the same nutritionally? Um, are earthworms the same as feeding tube effects? There's still worms for annelids, it's a gigantic group of worms. Um, they're, they're true worms anyway. So there's so much things, and there's also the practical side of fish keeping. And it comes into also dealing with disease in general. Why should I clean my filter without putting it under tap? So you're normally, like you're told, I'm not going to put it under the tap because it might have bacteria and that will destroy the bacteria. Firstly, thinking, a bit more critical thinking is, do I need, is this media, am I treating it more like filter floss? And then filter floss is replaced anyway, so that's removing the bacteria. And also just understanding how you're cleaning the bacteria, how you're cleaning the filter and whether that actually has an effect on the bacteria because people will say don't clean when you're water changing because it'll remove the bacteria. But if we understand that water chain, the bacteria isn't in the water, which is quite well known, it's not floating around, it likes to stick to hard surfaces, then when you're cleaning your filter, you're not really scrubbing it like a plate or something in the, um, or it's not in the dishwasher, it's just removing that detritus and then understanding that that detritus is blocking the nitrifying bacteria for, and I guess some more archaea from getting those, um, from getting the nutrients, the oxygen it needs. So removing that detritus is important, but also maybe, I don't think you can clean the filter too much other than it, unless you're scrubbing it. So actually understanding what you're doing um, and also, where maybe you're getting a crash. Why have you got the crash? Sometimes crashes are really difficult to understand why, but actually exploring why. Like, why do, um, why do you put dechlorinate in will help understand when you should put it in. Uh, can you dose the tank beforehand and then fill it up with a hose? And also understanding, I guess, 
a little bit of chemistry when it comes to water testing. Like a lot, I like understanding what tests are more reliable and what sort of time period they might be reliable because there's so so many different experiments with this and also understanding a little bit of like even just biosecurity um, is a lot of why. Why do um, so a lot of people will be like, oh, I use um, different nets for each tank, but then I siphon with the same tube. That is not biosecure at all. Also, having open lids, not biosecure bacteria stuff, it's, the tank's been far away, isn't too bad, but also think about everything that's going in the tank. If it's going in another tank, that's not biosecure. Um, a lot of, I think it, when you work in a lab, you kind of get used to different, like, actual biosecurity. And also there's only so much you could do with an aquarium. Because you're not going to spray it with alcohol, because you don't ideally want alcohol in the tank. And marinas, they do their own things. But why do you water change? There's so much of an argument against water change, but they never tell you why you water change. You water change not just to remove nitrates, which are toxic, but also, there's other things in the water that we don't even test for, we can't even test for without very expensive test kits. But also you're replenishing nutrients, you're replenishing minerals, and people will talk all about the plants, but what about the fishes? And they're all competing for the same stuff. Um, and they're none of, like a closed system, even if you're topping up. Uh, examples of closed systems but think about why you do everything don't just listen to what you're told question everything um, a lot of people do just focus on what they're told and that's not going to develop you as a fish keeper because you need to do research and then develop your own opinion develop your own ideas and that will somehow get you there um, and there's so much learning to be done. And this is for anyone, whether you're a goldfish keeper or a discus keeper or keep lower cards, because I didn't mention scientific names. Do you need scientific names if you're only keeping discus? Not really, because they're all symphysid on hybrids, um, usually aquaphysiatists, unless you're dealing with wilds. But then even with wilds, you're only dealing with three species. Three described species and then some undescribed species and the common names kind of describe them quite well because you've got the domestics, they're the hybrids, then you've got brown, browns and um, green. Well browns are, used to be heraldi but now they've kind of been split up between uh, Symphysodon tarzu and um, Acrasiatus. Um, heckles are just Symphysodon discus, I don't think there's any other name. but. Like goldfish, you don't really need to know scientific names. You don't need to know that it's Carassus aureatus, and then there's the uh, there's the Croatian. Is it Croatian? I don't. Why am I? I'm not recognising it like properly, isn't it? But Croatian Croatian carp, uh, which I can't remember, and then there's um, Carassus giblo, which is the Prussian carp. And that doesn't really help you if you're keeping goldfish. With plex, you need scientific names. But I didn't mention that because there's so many forms of, sci um, of fish keeping that might not need it so much. It depends on how many species you're dealing with. Um, and some of you really do need it. And that would be maybe another video. But anyway, I'm going to end this video here. And I would like to see what other people can think of as reasons to know why, uh, like a little, little bit more depth into the topic, what's important in fish keeping that you need to know a little bit more in depth. Anatomy is another one, like if anatomy teaches so much from diet to behaviour to something like that, but I did forget to include that even though that's my favourite topic. Um, well, anatomy and morphology in general. Anyway, I'm going to end that here. And if you like my videos, please comment, like and subscribe. I've got my website, Scientific Fish Keeping, for people that interested there's plenty of citations there and any article i research and there's quite a few i'm doing now morphology versus diet i guess and thank you for watching